Good morning. I'd like to thank everybody for staying for this brief presentation. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to just go back and cover a couple of things that we've been over over the past few months. If you remember, initially we had everybody sign up for a new church directory, and then after that we launched a new website. And now, as of the third piece of that puzzle, we're going to launch to you the mobile application that goes with all of this that we've been preparing for up until this point. And just to let you know how we got here, we did research over the past few years about how everyone was accessing the website previously, and more than 85% of you are accessing the website via a mobile device or a tablet, so the app just made sense. Most people are not sitting at their home computer or on a laptop on the website. They're on their mobile device. So it just made complete sense to develop an application that is specifically for the phone and for a tablet so that you can use it as easily as possible. This is meant to be a 30,000 foot view of how to download it and some of the key features of this application. It is not meant to be an intensive how-to, per se. So all of your ministers, your deacons, and your elders have had access to this app for the past few weeks and have been using it. So as we go through here, or if you have any troubles, see one of us and we will help you get through it. So let's get started. The first thing that we will need to do is download the app. You can do this from your app store or from the Google Play store if you're on Android. So you'll go in and you are looking for the My Church app. And this is how it will appear. And you will need to download this to your phone. And after you have downloaded it, you will need to open it. You can either open it from here or you can open it from the icon that will be downloaded into your phone onto your home screen. After that, you will be presented with this screen asking you for the church keyword. The keyword is CCOCWV. And this has been used to coincide with all of the other services that we offer like YouTube, Vimeo, and so on and so forth. After you've entered the keyword here where it's indicated, you're gonna push continue and then to validate that you've put in the correct thing, you will see the Central Church of Christ logo appear and tell, the, tell you that you're about to connect with the Central Church of Christ on this app. At this point, you just click connect and you're gonna get a few security validations. The first one is gonna be the app would like to send you notifications. You click allow and then click next at the bottom of the screen, okay? Then you're gonna be presented with a screen that tells you what notifications would you like to receive. We recommend that you click them all, but you can choose only emer emergency notifications or only service notifications. And this can be edited later in your profile, but again, we recommend that you select them all. And these would be notifications that we push directly to your phone. They wouldn't come via text. It'll become on a pop-up on your screen. So here you can see I've selected them all and now I'm gonna click next. The next screen you're gonna to come to is a, um, a location specific update. When you get to this screen, you click next, and then you're gonna get another security validation on your phone saying, when do we want to use this? You click allow while using the application only. At that point, you will be presented with this screen to sign in or register. This is the same mobile phone number that you used previously when you signed up for the church directory and went through that process. So you're gonna use the same mobile phone number here that you used for that process. That's what's on file. If you have any problems with this step, that means we don't have the correct mobile phone number or your profile wasn't updated properly. You'll need to see one of us to get that straightened out. So here I've entered the phone number and I'm gonna click the button that says, send me the security code. At that point, you will receive via text your security code. You enter that here where indicated, and then you will click next. At that point, the app is now installed and you are logged in. As you can see in the upper right-hand corner here, the little red icon, this is where your profile is. 
If you click on that in the upper right hand corner, you will be presented with this screen. Under your profile, you will see any push notifications that we have sent, the ones that we clicked off on in the beginning. Those will be listed here. If you have read them and you no longer want to retain them, you can delete them just like you would a text message out of the app. You also have a list here for bookmarks and downloads. As you are going through the app, if you see articles that you enjoy and that you would like to read over and over again, you can bookmark those and those will appear here in your favorites so that you can easily go back and you don't have to hunt for those articles that you value. You can also monitor your giving. If you're giving electronically, you can see here we've entered some, some test contributions so that you can see in the app how they would appear. It shows you the date, the amount you contributed, and the total amount that you have given in the current year. That's basically a quick view of your profile. So let's get into the meat of the application. At the bottom of the screen, you will see multiple icons. We're gonna start with the Connect menu here. If you click on that Connect menu, you'll be presented with this. And these are some of the things that you can do. You can maintain your serving schedule. And by that, I mean if you open this up, you can see everywhere that you're scheduled to serve and the date. You can see that I was scheduled for the AV booth and it has a green check mark because I accepted that and I am here serving in that capacity. I also have opening prayer opportunity on October the 26th. And you have a yellow icon here because I have not accepted that yet. But if I want to accept that or I can't take that opportunity, I'm able to click on that and it tells me that I have the opening prayer on Wednesday Bible study, October the 26th. And I can either choose to accept or decline that opportunity down here at the bottom if I'm not going to be in town. So you can now do that within the app instead of having to do it through your email like you had been doing previously. You can still continue to do it through your email as you will receive those opportunities that way as well. This is just a quicker way to manage it. You also have groups. Under groups, you will see this icon in the top right-hand corner, little magnifying glass. The groups that you are already participating in will automatically appear there for you. As you can see here for me, these are the groups that I am currently participating in. If there is a group that you would like to participate in that is not listed, you simply click on the top right-hand corner on that magnifying glass and all the groups will be listed. You can click on the one you want to participate in and say, I would like to be a member of this group. And it will be added by that group leader to your main screen. Within these groups, you can send each other messages you can see the calendar of events specifically for that group, and you can see any needs that that group may specifically have. And you can also see all the other members of that group. You can also check in for a service that you are attending. To use that feature, this morning I did this. It's asking us who would we like to check in. I clicked on myself, clicked on morning worship, It took me back. I also clicked on my wife and clicked on morning worship for her as well. And then it's asking me who would like to receive notifications. What this means is if during that service we needed to send you a notification of some sort, who would you like to receive it? Here, I've selected no one. I don't want to receive any notifications while I'm in this service. So I've clicked that and I've clicked next here at the bottom. And it's telling me that success, myself and my wife have been checked in. And attendance has now been taken for us for this service. You can use that when you come in. If you want, we're also taking attendance for our purposes if you're not using it. And anyone viewing at home can check in for the service in the same fashion. Here you can see that we also have congregation-wide needs that may need to be filled that you can view. You also have access to the new church directory, which everyone signed up for several months prior to this. If you remember what this looks like, it looks like this. When you click on this church directory within the app, this is the most secure portion 
of our system. Even though you're signed into the app, it is going to require you to revalidate your credentials to make sure someone did not randomly steal your phone and now has access to everyone's information. This is an extra security feature to make sure that that does not occur. Your username is the email that the church has on file. You'll remember that from when you signed up this for this to begin with. You enter your password and then you click log in. If you remember your email but you don't remember your password, there's also a forgot password feature here. It will send you a link to set a new password. When you log in, you'll be presented with this screen. You see the search bar there. If you know specifically who you're looking for, you start typing in their name and they will appear. You can click on them and get the information that you need. Their email address, their home address to send a card, their phone number to give them a call. If you're not sure, sure who you're looking for, maybe you're thinking of getting in contact with a few people, in that search bar, instead of typing in someone's name, you simply hit the space bar and it will bring you everyone in the list and you can scroll through. Again, there's the box. You just click in it and hit the space bar. It'll bring you everyone. Also have the opportunity to send prayer requests within the app. And you also have the opportunity to contact us directly. This is what the prayer request looks like. Simply click here and it will automatically generate a box pop up that you can enter your prayer request and forward it off to us. You also have the opportunity here to get directions to the building, email us about another issue, or you can push call and it would give us a call. It also lists the service times and Bible study times here. Secondly, under the give icon, if you've been giving electronically, this is simply an easy way to access that rather than have to go to the website and click on the icon. You can do it directly from your app. Nothing has changed with this. It's the exact same interface. It's just a faster way to access it. Under the media tab, you can watch live stream services. This is to make it easier for people that have trouble accessing it on the website or YouTube. They can click right here and go right to the current live stream. You can watch past services that have been recorded and are available. Recent articles that have been published, you click on that. This is an example and you can scroll through infinitely and, and read the past articles that are available. The announcements that Jonathan mentioned earlier prior to his sermon are also in here and they are updated immediately. The current prayer list is also available in your app. Here's a copy of that and what that looks like. You can also study the Bible. We have loaded this in here. It's very exciting. Once you click on that and you click on read Bible, it's pretty much like any electronic Bible. You pick your book, your verse. We've also added here where you can choose your version. Many people like to study from many different versions that are available. There are quite a few in here. Um, and you just change that here to whatever version you like, King James, New King James, English Standard Version, whatever it may be. Another exciting thing is, is in the most popular versions, you can click here to change the language. So if you had somebody that maybe needed to read the Bible in Spanish or another language that they are native to. You can change that here as well in the most popular versions. You also have access to listen to the daily Bible readings, the house to house, heart to heart newsletters that go out each month, and to the other social media accounts that we have here, Facebook, YouTube, and Vimeo. Finally, the events, if you click on that, and click on upcoming events here. You will see a listing of all the events from the current day throughout the rest of the calendar year. And you are able to, if there's more information, you're able to click on those and it'll bring you more information about that event that's typed in there. Again, this is just meant to be a quick overview of what it can do and how to get logged in. If you have any issues, have any questions, the ultimate goal is to make some more in-depth tutorial videos that we can post for specific functions that we've gone over that actually go a little deeper than what I've shown you here. Um, we will be working on that. But in the meantime, we wanted to get everybody access to it. 
any questions, ministers, deacons, elders, seek out one of us and uh, we can help you. Thank you for your time.